In Lyric 8.8, .8, we're going to create a lower third super that uses auto follow on and shows the animation capabilities, something new in Lyric 8.8. .8. So this is the finished product. This is a lower third super with two lines of text. And you can see if I type in the bottom row or the top row, the bar grows. So that's one thing that we're going to show you. And the second thing is that even though it's set to auto follow, I can actually animate the bar. So you can see the effect in it, it will actually animate. So we're going to show how this gets put together in Lyric 8.8. .8. Started with the 3D pod. And again, I just brought it down to the approximate size. And I'm just going to go and pick a bitmap and add it to the face of this. And we'll just change the color, bring the specular color down and uh, the diffuse color, just bring it up a little bit. I want it to be a kind of a silver bar. And the other thing is I want to turn this. So if you go to the X and Y center and make them uh, 0.5 and then quickly rotate it to 90, you can see that now it's uh, left and right. And then I'll go ahead in the scene graph and we're going to name this white bar. Now I wanted the red chip on the left and the right. And I kind of have the, the white one already set. So if I just copied and pasted a second one down, and um, we'll just give it a different name, call it red chip left, change the color to be a red color. And again, right now it's behind the white, so you can't see it. So if I just move it a little bit left, you'll see it. And then if I go to the 3D um, primitive properties and turn up the tessellation, and then I just want to take the upper left hand corner and the upper oh, sorry the upper left hand corner and the lower left hand corner just add a little bit of roundness to it just to give it a little bit of design and now I'm going to type in some text some 3d text we'll call it top text and I'm going to copy and paste it and then we'll label the next one as bottom text and you can see that I've already added the right red chip as well. I didn't go through it in the tutorial, but it's basically the same with the rounded edges on the other side. Now the top line and the bottom line, I'm just going to move these into place. So they're both lined up perfectly. Now the 3D templates, you can see it's right at the, uh, the 3D template properties. It's right at the top. We've actually changed the 3D template properties and the 2D template properties. It's right at the top when you right click on that, so it's very easy to find. Now I'm just going to add a size to fit on the width uh, for the top line and it comes out uh, about, well, let's just make it 1,000. I'm just going to type in 1,000. So that's the maximum width for the top. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom line. Make it 1,000. And let's just type in uh, bottom line, bottom text here, just so that we uh, know what it is. So bottom text. The other thing is, let's put it auto race. And uh, how about all caps? And we'll give it to be number one. And then we'll go to the top text and do the same thing. All caps and auto race. So now the text is done. Now the one thing that I want to do is instead of having the white bar just uh, follow the top line text, what we have to do is group the two texts together. Actually the little red chips, I wanted to make them a little bit narrow, so I'm going to make them like 0 .070. So again, take the top text and the bottom text, group them together into a group, and we'll call this group text. Now I'm going to add a mask because the mask is used to wipe on the text. So I want the mask to be wide because the text could be across the screen. And we'll bring the mask over to the right-hand side of the text. And we'll go to Tools Masking, and this is our new masking, where we can do the stencil and the shader masking all in the same menu. So in this one, we're going to take the mask rename it so it's text mask so we know what it is and drop the bottom and top text in there so both of them came in so let's just remove that and just type in text mask okay so that's done 
and we can just move it off. You can see that it's actually just wiping the text. This is going to be part of the group that moves across the screen to wipe the text. All right, so the group text is what we're going to auto follow to. Okay, so let's go to the white bar, right click and select auto follow. And the reference is not the text, but it's actually the group text. And we'll click on the position and offset it a little to the left so it sort of butts up against that uh, red chip. And the reference point is left. We'll scale it. And I'm just going to move it sort of equal portions off to the right. Now we go to the red chip right and we can make that auto follow the white bar. We can make it auto follow the text too, but let's do the white bar. And the, the connection point is on the on the sorry on the left, but the reference point is on the right. So we move that to the edge. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to do the mask and it's going to We can do the basically anything. It's going to track to the the reference point. It's going to be the red chip. So again, make it left, and on this one, the anchor point uh, reference point is to the left. We move it just sort of into place. Now let's group all of these together because this is what's going to be moved: the red chip, right, the white bar, and the text mask. All of it's going to be grouped together. Give it a new name, group bar, and I'll move it down below the text so you see the text again. So we're just about done here. I'm just going to save this scene. You can see as I type the text out, the bar grows. But remember on this one, you could see how it looks like it's wiping on the text. Now I have my template set up to do that, but I'm just going to show you what happens if we just leave it like this and we try to uh, make this work. So let's go back and recall that. So if I have the, the group bar, you can see that where it says lock hierarchy, if I turn these off on the red chip, the right chip, the, or sorry, the white bar, the red chip, and the text mask, now I can move that whole bar. If I didn't, if I had that checked, left it checked, I would not be able to move that bar because it's sort of locked in, into place with the text. So by turning that off, I can now animate it. So again, we're going to record that scene. Now again, if you watch this, it comes and it wipes on. And then the effect out is going to, going to wipe it off. So we need another mask because the mask has to cover that white bar. So we're going to throw another mask on the screen. Make it a little bit wider. And push it off to the left hand side. Now as long as it's around that red bar, that's fine because the white bar, we're going to actually take that group or take the red chip and move it above so it sort of covers that uh, anyway. All right. So we look at that mask and I'm just going to rename that mask. I call it mask left. And again, we're going to go to the masking and go to layer number two and add that. And now the white bar and the red ship, we will add that to layer number two. So you can see now that when I move it, now the mask is off just a little bit. So we can go back and fix that. Go to the, the text mask and just move the offset just ever so slightly so it looks like it's lining up with that red. There we go. So now it looks like it's actually wiping on. And the bar ends because that's where the text ends, but if the, the text is longer, that bar is going to be longer. Okay, so basically what we want to do now is let's add our transitions. And I'm just going to add the effect in and uh, 
the rest of them will, will be in the scene, but we basically want to do the same thing. So first of all, I'm going to take the group text, or sorry, the group bar and the red chip. And that's really all I need to animate. We'll add that to the effect in. Now I want these to be about 20 frames in length. So if I just come down to the 20 frame mark, right click on that timeline and say add a keyframe. That's my end position. So that's the quickest and easiest way to get that. So we'll add a keyframe there. And the reason why I'm typing out the longest, I want to make sure that that bar goes off the screen to cover it in the longest mode. So we'll go to the red chip first, and I'm just going to slide that off the bottom. And then come to the 20 frame mark and right click and go modify, because I always like adding ease ins on my keyframe, so we'll make that uh, 20. And then on the group bar. We're just going to slide that all the way off until we don't see it. And then do the same thing there. Right click, modify the keyframe, do an ease in of 20 frames. Now we're just about done, but it's going to look a little funny. We want one delayed from the other. So take it down to about the 13 or the 12 frame mark. And we'll move that group down to the 12 frame. And the other thing, go to the transition properties now and we'll say hold first frame so that it doesn't flash on the screen. So we're just about done. This effect in is, should be just about done. I'm going to re-record the message. If you go to the effect in, you'll see that it, it all sort of times together perfectly. Okay, so let's uh, Bring up my frame buffer here and actually look and see what it looks like on the output. So that looks good. And I did basically the reverse on the effect out and I built some updates. So right now the update will leave the red chip on the left hand side and slide it all off and then back on again. So that's the new feature in, uh, in Lyric 8.8 .8 where you can actually animate using the autofollow.